Consciousness Group, and I'm very happy to have this event featuring Fernando Bolsa. Now I'd like to introduce you to uh, Fernando. Um, today we get to share with a truly unique individual. Uh, Fernando Bolsa is a modern Renaissance man. I met Fernando about three years ago in San Diego. Uh, from our first conversation, I got the sense that he was from a another planet, and I still believe that today. <laughs> um, the first thing one noticed about him is that he talks in a calm and focused manner as if he had practiced his entire life to tell you, and only you, about how incredible every day life can be. His education is a collage of disciplines. Uh, this pioneer was a research associate at the Human Interface Technology Lab at the University of Washington. He studied for researching fields such as cognitive science, architecture, fine art, and industrial design. So he can go from telling you about artificial intelligence, then immediately share about Van Gogh's style of brush strokes. In the last few years, Fernando has gone deep into the realms of consciousness and the evolution of humanity. He is now following his passion by sharing his findings and interdimensional knowledge. We now get to have a live experience of his gifts as he, we learn how to design our own transformation. Please join me in welcoming our speaker for today, Fernando Mosa. Let me just take this in, because I'm not sure if this is real. Or this is one of the many times I have been thinking about this presentation. And it's been ongoing for the last few years. Being a designer and studying a variety of fields like architecture, industrial design, fine art, it goes on and on because at some point I realized that everything in creativity, whether it was poetry, music, art, dance, it came from this interdimensional place that wasn't here like our own physical selves. When you hear the right kind of music, when you watch somebody perform, you know that you are connected to another type of energy. What I thought about is, we are here for a particular purpose on Earth. And at some point, you just wake up for a moment from your everyday life, your nine to five, and you realize there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Something inside you tells you that it's time to ask deeper questions, that your soccer mom schedule, that your day-to-day -day grind, paying taxes, all of that. There's something larger, larger. And I had that question happen to me many, many times. That question happened to me when I was in sixth grade in elementary school. That's when I can say officially I had my awakening. How interesting, huh? There's a big weight on the shoulders of a young person at that age seeing that your teachers are telling you about beautiful concepts of math and science. And from the point of view of where you are awakened, when you realize that while you can see the entire castle, society and teachers is showing you one brick at a time and forcing you to look at one brick at a time. So some of you, or any of you that have children, already know that the children coming into this new generation already come with that awareness. They come knowing that they are part of something bigger and special. And it's time for us also to awaken to that new, new generation. Next slide, please. I'm going to turn this on here just a little bit up. I guess we have the new PowerPoint, this new technology. This is where the door is. It's a very simple question that we ask ourselves. The same old, who am I? What am I? When am I? You think you're where, when? So how do you begin those, those answers? So we're going to try a little fun exercise, just for fun. Take your index finger and point forward to something that you can see. It doesn't matter. Just hold out to it for a moment in your mind and recognize what it is. Now I want you to take that index finger and point it to yourself. What are you pointing at? What are you pointing at? What is that? My face, my nose, my... 
Who's Maya? <coughs> Monica, can you point it, Monica? You sure that's it? So you're a body? Did anybody else have a opinion about pointing at yourself? Just pointing at my body, not at me. Just pointing at this that vessel. As soon as you do an exercise like that, your brain has an issue where it can't do the separation anymore, the duality. It can't deal with you being in the center of a concept because our brain, our perceptual system, what we've learned is designed to separate, to go good, bad, hot, cold, love, hate, here, there, linear, 3D. And as soon as it faces something that, oh shoot, I didn't realize that I'm pointing at whatever it is that can ask the question, what am I pointing at? I've gotten people that say, I don't know. I have no clue what I'm pointing at. So whenever you get to that point in your life, when you say, I don't even know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. We get happy. We just go, wow, this is great. You're at the door. This is where, where you can be. This is where you can contemplate some of these answers. Things like this. When I ask the question, where am I? Who am I? What am I? I broaden that context and remember again where I am. I am part of this living, living, breathing, conscious entity that we know as our planet, our home. And this experience, this energy that is our planet, is a living, breathing entity that is thinking about us as we are thinking about it. Imagine the view when you're out in space. What do you think astronauts feel when they're out there? What do you feel when you get to be out there? Because you have been out there. Why? Because what you're looking at is one of the many versions of you. Imagine that if somebody asked you, and I'm asking you that, what if I showed you more of what you truly are behind this body, behind this three-dimensional perception. And I showed you something like this. This is one of your many bodies. It is an extension. Think of you being a cell in the lifeblood of this body. Because the cells in your body, in your muscles, in your blood, they all are consciously working together to manifest you. And they have their divine purpose within your you have a divine purpose within this other extension of your body. And here we are, it's like, right? There somewhere. I don't know Yeah. So next time you ask the question, what am I? Who am I? Don't forget, this is one of the, this is part of who you are. Next slide, please. The first step in this doorway, in your transformational design, in designing your own change, your own transformation, is to awaken. And you've heard that word before a lot. Well, what does it mean? I'm awake. I mean, I'm not sleeping right now. I'm standing here talking to you guys. But when I look up at the sky at night, I see all those stars. And then I go and deal with my job situation, the banking, the economy. And look at those stars again. And then I look at the sun when I'm out there, sun tanning and relaxing. And I think, how is that thing that I'm looking at? How does that relate to me? So when I awaken to the idea that the calcium in my bones, that the iron in my blood, that the carbon in my muscles were made inside a star that went supernova. It makes me think. I am related, physically related to the sun that's out there that I'm looking at. That is my father. That is my God. That is my entity. That's my body. That is me. 